Now, as if there wasn't enough drama in the land of all elite elementary, we got some more this week. The discussion was around one half of the reigning AEW World Tag Team Champions, Cash Wheeler, FTR Hare, being arrested little more than a week before he is scheduled to fly to the UK to defend those titles against the Young Bucks in one of the top matches on the biggest show in AEW history. This story comes to us from the Orlando Sentinel. Daniel Wheeler, a tag team champion in All Elite Wrestling, was arrested Friday morning by the Orlando Police Department and charged with one count of aggravated assault with a firearm. He was booked in Orange County Jail, according to county records. Wheeler, better known in wrestling circles as Cash Wheeler, is a member of the tag team FTR with Dax Harwood. They hold the AEW Tag Team Championship. Wheeler appeared in court Friday afternoon, where it was revealed that the arrest stemmed from a road rage-type incident where Wheeler did not know the alleged victim. Bail was set at $2,500, and Wheeler is forbidden from possessing a firearm or having contact with the alleged victims. That's victims plural. Until the case is decided. According to court records, Wheeler's alleged offense was committed on July 27th, and a warrant was issued July 28th for his arrest. On August 3rd, his attorneys issued a written plea of not guilty, and his appearance at a pretrial conference was waived on that day. His arrest affidavit was filed on August 18th, AEW issued a statement to the Sentinel which reads as follows, AEW has been made aware of the charge and we are closely monitoring the situation. He is fully cooperating with local authorities. The charge, by the way, is a third degree felony punishable in the state of Florida by up to five years in prison. Or you could be fined and put on probation for five years. So it really could go either way from one extreme to the other. Orange County later on released an incident report that has a lot more details on what supposedly happened. And this was written in the report. And even though this is information that is publicly accessible to anybody online, addresses and license plate numbers are redacted here. I'm using a version of this that is redacted uh, because I don't think we need to be giving that information out freely. On July 27, 2023, at 0959, Officer M. Bohe responded to Redacted in reference to an aggravated assault with a firearm call. Upon my arrival, I spoke to the victim, Daniel Mata, who provided me with a sworn written and verbal statement that said the following. Mata stated that he was driving west on Interstate 4, north of Exit 83, He noticed a Jeep Gladiator weaving in and out of traffic, honking its horn. So he moved over to the far right lane to let the Jeep pass. Mata said the Jeep took the right shoulder to drive around him on the passenger side of his vehicle. Mata looked over and noticed a white male with a beard pointing a black semi-automatic handgun out of the driver's window at him with a strong stare. Mata said that he feared for his life at this time. He stated he slowed down to get out of the way of the firearm and ended up behind the suspect's vehicle at this time. Both were committed to exit 83, which was Ivanhoe Boulevard. Mata took pictures of the Jeep as it turned right onto College Park Drive and began to drive reckless. After taking the picture, Mata said he called 911 and gave the vehicle information to dispatch the details of what had occurred. He explained that he could not be late for work and he asked an officer to meet him at his work. I created a photo lineup using Elvis, a database used by law enforcement for investigative purposes. Elvis selected selected five random photos based on the suspect's Florida driver's license picture, page one of two, and put them in a randomized order with the suspect being the sixth picture. Officer Blinn met with Mata and presented him with the photo lineup instructions and the photo lineup itself. Mata quickly selected the correct photo of the suspect, later identified as Daniel M. Wheeler, with 100% certainty. Based on Mata's sworn statement and the positive photo lineup identification, probable cause exists to charge Wheeler with aggravated assault with a firearm. Now, it should be said that the incident report reflects one side of the story. We have not heard Wheeler's side of things, but it does not paint him in a very good light at all that he was weaving in and out of traffic and waving a gun in someone's face like a raving lunatic. I mean, I know it's Florida. I shouldn't be surprised. There's a reason why you hear the phrase Florida man. 
That's probably the tamest story to come out of Florida, but it does not paint him in a very good light. Now, he pleaded not guilty. I would not expect him to plead anything else because that's what his lawyer told him to do. It's no different than when Tammy Sitch was arrested, and I'm going to be talking about her legal problems later. You didn't think I wasn't going to talk about her now, did you? That would be like writing an entire book and then leaving out the last chapter of the story. I'll get to her later. At a hearing on Friday, which you can find video of online, the judge ordered him to surrender any weapons he may have in his possession to the sheriff's office within 12 hours of his release, pending a resolution of the case against him. He was also ordered not to have any contact with the alleged victims. And I see a lot of people online laughing at them as, quote, oh, victims, you know, because he didn't actually shoot them. He didn't physically harm them. Just because he didn't fire the weapon does not mean that they cannot be victims if he supposedly waved a gun in their face. That is not normal behavior. Now, if it were to come out later on that they waved a gun in his face first, or they tried to run him off the road or something, then that I can understand. And we'll see. You know, right now we have one side of the story. He has not been convicted of any crime. He does not have a criminal history. People throwing Jeff Hardy's name around or Jimmy Uso in some weird whataboutism with WWE are not arguing in good faith because they know full well that those guys, they had a history of run-ins with the law. Every time we hear a story about one of them, it's, it's far from the first time we've heard a story. But again, it's apples and oranges. We're talking about two different situations here. He has since bonded out. He is free to make his shots, no pun intended. One thing the judge did not do is order him to surrender his passport or bar him from leaving the jurisdiction. If the judge had done that, he would not have been able to fly to London for all in which would have been a disaster for AEW. So as of this moment, he is still scheduled to fly to Wembley to defend the titles with Dax against the Young Bucks. But this is a PR nightmare for AEW, and it makes the company look bad because this incident occurred almost a month ago. This isn't something that just happened this week. He turned himself in this week. But the incident happened last month. So either he told AEW and they knew about it and still promoted him for this match. And how could they know for sure that he wouldn't have any sort of travel restrictions imposed on him? That seems awfully risky. Either they knew or they didn't know because Wheeler kept it quiet. And that's just as bad. You know, the incident may have taken place outside the ring, away from work. But it could still have an impact on his ability to work. And it's definitely going to affect the company once the news gets out. They, they had to go draft a quote real quick to uh, dispense to all the news outlets for, about what had happened. Because I'm sure they were getting it from every angle, every website and newspaper wanting some kind of comment. It's embarrassing for them, just as much as it is for cash. So there's no way to hide it from them without them ever knowing about it. If he hid it from them, that's selfish and irresponsible. Now, Nick Hausman on his House of Wrestling website, he posted a story titled Top AEW Talent and Management Surprised by Cash Wheeler News. House of Wrestling has been asking around all day, this was on Friday, has been asking around all day about whether AEW was aware of the charge against Wheeler before the news broke this morning and has not been able to find anyone who knew anything prior to today. This includes several notable AEW roster members, and top members of management. On two occasions, I was the person to break the news to members of upper management who seemed completely unaware of what was unfolding. House of Wrestling has not been able to confirm whether Tony Khan, CM Punk, or Wheeler's tag team partner Dax Harwood knew what was going to play out today. We were given the impression by someone close to the situation that Khan did not know, but again, we have not been able to confirm that and are awaiting a response from Tony Khan. In regard to the Young Bucks versus FTR rubber match set to take place at All In, we were also given the impression that the match is still moving forward. And that was pretty clear from watching Collision last night, given they were still promoting the match. But the last line of the story notes that Fightful has reported that they have yet to speak to an AEW roster member who was aware of the charge against Wheeler prior to today's revelation. It's a good rule of thumb that if you get arrested for something, and you work for one of these companies, even if you think it was all just a misunderstanding and in the end it's all going to go away, or uh, you didn't do what you were alleged to have done, 
you know it's going to come out sooner or later. This is the kind of shit that you could have gotten away with 30 or 40 years ago, maybe, and nobody would have known. But you know that it's going to come out sooner or later. Just go to your boss, give him a heads up, let him know what's going on. So they don't get blindsided by an email from fucking Nick Hausman or Sean Ross Sapp or TMZ asking for comment. So I guess now we have a pretty good sense of who's walking out of Wembley with those titles. And they should. They should change the titles now. I don't blame Tony Khan for still going through with the match, by the way. I know that's been a a little point of controversy also on social media. I don't blame him at all. I know it looks bad with a gun charge hanging over one half of your tag team champions, but he is in a no-win situation here. If he does the match, he gets criticized for not taking Wheeler off the show or, or suspending him until this whole thing is cleared up. And if he doesn't do the match, he loses one of his top attractions for his biggest show And gets criticized for penalizing the guy before he's even convicted. Right? Innocent until proven guilty and all that. So he can't win. It is a no-win situation for Tony Khan. If I'm him and, and Wheeler can travel and there's no restrictions on his travel, I'm doing the match. And I'm getting it over with. And then I can deal with the fallout from it after, however it turns out. However this case is resolved. Because nobody knows for sure what the final resolution is going to be. After it came out that it was this kind of, sort of, road rage incident, I mean, it was a road rage incident. (laughs) According to this guy, I don't know why they're kind of beating around the bush by saying it it looks like a road rage. I mean, based on this guy's story, his story is that it was a road rage incident. So nobody knows for sure, though, what the final resolution to this is going to be. But everybody was like, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, because they were not sure you hear firearm charge, right? Aggravated assault with a firearm, that could mean a whole lot of different things. That could mean a whole lot a whole lot worse than what this is. But that doesn't mean that this still isn't bad. So getting the titles off them would make a lot of sense. I don't hold that against Tony Khan. I cannot say the same, though, for this next story. 